Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah in Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV gossip. And of course, Jeff Lewis. Oh my gosh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new, get comfortable in comments. We love hearing where you're from, what you have to say. We try to make call, uh, time for questions at the end, but talk amongst yourself. I love our community. We are so amazing to have each other. It is so fun to chat with y'all live every single day. If you're on the replay, shout out, please make a comment, please like, subscribe, all the things. Yes, thank you for the compliments on my shirt. It is almost Halloween, y'all, a week from today. So next uh, on Halloween, I'll probably wear my witch's hat that I've had, I don't know, probably literally 10 years. It's the only thing I really wear to dress up unless we're going to a party. So um, anyways, I will be wearing that. But I thought, you know what? I should wear orange today. It is fall. It is a week from Halloween. Why not, right? Okay. Uh, let's get started with shout out news. Shout out everybody. Oh, I, I'm trying to get that off. How do I get that off? Hold on. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit about Lauren Manzo. Do I remember her from Real Housewives of New Jersey? Caroline Manzo's daughter, Mauricio and Kyle and all of their latest confusion. Uh, a little bit about Andy Cohen and we're going to skim over 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, because really in episode 11, not much happened. So anyways, except for the D word, the divorce word coming up for Asuelo and Kalani, right? Okay, so yesterday, so yeah, Michael uh, Riley says he was shocked about Lauren. So I don't follow Lauren Manzo on Instagram or TikTok, but she comes up a lot in my feed on TikTok. So I would see her. I knew she had lost weight. I don't know if she's admitted to Ozempic, but who cares? Uh, she's definitely way thinner than usual. Uh, I think I would see in her comments people asking about her marriage and she just wouldn't answer the last time Caroline Manzo was on Jeff Lewis Live, she alluded to some stuff going on. I don't really know if she was talking about her daughter's marriage or not. It almost seems like Lauren and her daughter that she has with Vito. Remember, Vito and her were really good friends. I guess they'd been married eight years. So they are lap band is what she had. Okay, thank you. So they are all in Italy right now, except for Vito. So if things were all that good and you were married eight years and you're in the family, you would think he would be at her brother Albie's wedding, but he's not. So uh, I guess they had already agreed to divorce and this was just the final step was um, filing. I don't know that he should have done it while she's away in Italy at her brother's wedding, though. That seems kind of sus on the time, right? She did put out a video. I think it's on Instagram or TikTok. I can't remember where I might have uh, shared it. Oh, is Donna in here? Shout out, Donna. Happy, happy day. Um, Daily dose of Donna. Um, so I did share that. But she is basically saying uh, everything's fine. We have planned this. We didn't have feel like we had the need to say anything publicly because we haven't been on TV for seven years. So we didn't feel like we needed to say anything. She knew the rumors were swirling. She knew people were asking in her comments, in her private messages, in her DMs. You know what I mean? So, uh, so she, Carrie says he filed in September, but she says in her video that this was the final step to be filing. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to go by what she says. Who knows what the truth is, right? Because as we know, with our friends Mauricio and Kyle, I think we can just be lied to over and over and over again. And I did see, I think it was either in Daily Dose of Dawn, the Facebook group or her Instagram. She posted something about Mauricio and, you know, all of us are talking about it. He put out this post, which means you can have comments and stuff, this big, long thing about his dance tonight for Dancing with the Stars. and. The, the memories of moving mountains and all the obstacles that he and Kyle overcame when they first got married, had their daughter together, all these things. And he basically dedicates in advance his dance tonight to Kyle and their family. They are saying now that she has removed all of her content. I did take a quick skim. Uh, I don't know what was there to begin with because I haven't followed uh, Kyle, but she did. But they did say that she has removed all of her Dancing with the Stars a supportive post from him. So I don't know what's going on there. I feel like the rumors or whatever that was circulating with these pictures of him holding hands with his dance partner, 
um, there's probably something more to that. And she probably didn't like it. But who the hell is she to talk? She's practically making love to Morgan Wade right in front of our eyes and not denying anything publicly on social media, anything that we are aware of. So why can't he do a little side action stuff? Like, seriously, I just missed something Donald said. And I wanted to say, I just deep dived on my show today too. Kyle hasn't liked it or commented four hours after he posted. So that's very tough. Let's see if Donna wants to come on and chat. Uh, uh, oh, I want to ask about her son too. I think he broke his toe at school. Too. I'm assuming it happened at school. Let's see if Donna has time to pop in real quick. Um, haven't watched much of Dancing with the Stars as it's not on here in Sweden, but I watch clips. Jason and Ariana are so good. Um, I don't watch it either. It's not my kind of show. Uh, I, I don't like the whole voting thing because I feel like even it's kind of a popularity contest, which I totally understand and make no bet. That's why he's posting about it, right? He's trying to remind people as if you haven't caught T and Z, him coming out of the, the parking lot, whatever, the back door. Uh, to remind people that he's on Dancing with the Stars and he's still there, right? I'm assuming they get some sort of m money whenever they do. Oh, she requested. Okay. Why is it not? Did that work, Donna? Let's see. Technology is not being my friend today, except, except, I'm trying to accept you. There we go. Hey, Donna. Hi. Tell me what's going on with Kyle and Mauricio. At what time? Tell us. Yeah. Shout out, Monica Casey. I know. area there's been lots of rumors about him over the years he's a hot handsome piece of meat i mean do we think he's been faithful all these years i don't know Is it the tongue for you? Is it the tongue? It's the tongue. It's the teeth. It's like very, like, sure enough. Yeah. Very, like, hmm. But yeah. anyway, I think, I think there's a couple things. I think they're concerned with how they look in the public eye. He obviously was caught holding hands with another woman. And it doesn't go along with the storyline of, like, I really want this. Yeah. I don't know. It's so confusing. I'm sort of over it all. The The trailer that came out, though, whenever he's saying, like, how many tattoos do you have now? And she, he has no earthly idea how many tattoos she has or what they are, where they are. How long has it been since he's seen her naked body?
I'm sure a lot of people can pull it off, like sleeping with two people at once, but. Yeah. I just don't understand the lies and the, the continuing things on his end. Like this summer, whenever they posted that gorgeous family picture of them all in Italy, was it on that vacation trip together? Which I understand doing happy memories like that together with your kids. I would love for them, to, I would love for everyone that divorces with children to, to, to maintain those kinds of things, right? But why do we need all the lies? Why can't they each just move on? I mean, it's not like divorce is like, we're not in the thirties anymore where it's unheard of to get a divorce. I think they would want to leave it. I think they know that they have to keep it going to keep watching the show. If we knew, I mean, I won't keep watching the show even if anything, but if, if we knew that they divorce and they put it out there today saying no longer, I don't believe the ratings would be as huge. Because yeah. People are dying. Same with Morgan Wade. Yeah. When she, Absolutely. Say not it, when she finally comes out with this truth that she has been in a relationship with this woman, I think that it's like the, it's, the suspense is going to pull away a lot of us off. We're going to be like, who cares? Now? We know. I mean, how many tickets is Morgan Wade selling in hopes that somebody sees Kyle Richards on the side of the stage, because I've seen that all over Instagram, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, well, I just thought about this. Uh, Monica Casey is on and she's got divorce, the divorce podcast, the divorce party. She needs to get them on for sure. And she needs to get Will, she, Will Smith, J Jada Pinkett, Meryl Streep. I think there's who? Lauren May. Well, at least they're honest about it. But again, they didn't come out for a long time that they were going through this divorce, which I don't to each their own right. They're way less in the public, whatever. But also Lauren Manzo has like 500 or 700,000 Instagram followers. It's not like she's not on social media or TikTok because she absolutely is. That's probably how she makes her money. I don't know. Yeah. Get it. Get it, Monica. Um, I cannot wait to see you in nine days at BravoCon. Yes. 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 Bye. Oh my gosh. Um, so fun. Okay. Let's keep chatting about, well, Mauricio and Kyle, I think we got all the scoop there. Um, Andy Cohen was chatting about dating on Hinge. He's had a few really good dates lately. He interviews Danny Pellegrino, who is going to be a panelist on a few different panels at BravoCon, but he doesn't say which one. So I'm curious which ones that's going to be. I really like him. But he does ask Andy, what is one of your housewives that you are, are sad that left? And he said he had to really think about it. And he even brought up uh, some other people. But he said, Andy Cohen said, I'm really bummed. I was really bummed when Tinsley Mortimer left. And me too. I think she's a great housewife. I'm thrilled for her that she's getting married. She's going to be a stepmom to these three kids. He's rich. He's cute. She's got an instant family built in. I guess he's a widow. So even though that's sad, it, I mean, maybe things happen for a reason. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want to say that to her, to, to the, the ex, the, the, the lady's family, but I'm just saying I am happy for her. And I do think things happen for a reason. I now don't want to see her as a housewife because I want her to just move forward and just be this rich, normal, you know, housewife and, and stepmom to these three little kids. Right. Um, Andy does kind of get irritated though. All the rumors about New Jersey and this cast trip at the very end of the season that got canceled. He verifies the freaking house caught on fire. So that's the reason for it. But he seems very irritated, all these rumors. And he basically says, I'm just going to plow through. Everything's fine. Everything's hunky dory. Uh, I don't know. He just seemed irritated by it all. And I'm like a little like bug up his ass or something. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. He does say he's going to go out and buy Britney Spears, the woman in me book though. So let me know. I know Donna is listening to that book. I know other people are saying they are, and it's really good. I love an autobiography. 
especially by a celebrity like Britney Spears, I just feel like so much had already been released. I was kind of wondering if it was going to be really good, but maybe it is. Uh, maybe I'll buy it in time for my flight to BravoCon and I will read it, but I'll probably sleep because I know I'm going to be getting very little sleep when we're there. Uh, speaking of very little sleep, I did put out the information. I think it's on my Instagram, YouTube, the Facebook group, Jeff, uh, Jeff Lewis Obsessed. So make sure you're joining that. I am going to have a little get together at the Link Promenade in Las Vegas. So it doesn't matter if you have a BravoCon ticket or not. It's free to get in, obviously, 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday, November 2nd at the um, the Yard House Outdoor Patio. So just come. It's going to be a great way. If you were coming alone, there are so many of us. Technically, I'm flying alone from Houston because my girlfriend is flying out a little bit later in the day and she's staying at a completely different hotel, a, a much nicer hotel than mine, right? Uh, she and her husband are kind of worried for me staying at the link with all of these reviews that are online and the bed bugs of it all. So let's pray that everyone has a great experience at BravoCon because I am getting a little bit worried, but y'all are going to send me all the tips, step, uh, tips to not bring bed bugs home back to Texas because I would just die. Like I've never dealt with that and I just cannot, 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 cannot. Okay. So make sure you, um, RSVP to that. Um, you can either send me a DM on Instagram at Jeff Lewis Obsessed or an email at Sarah with an H at Jeff Lewis Obsessed.com just for a head count. It doesn't cost to get in. It's going to be very casual. Come with an open heart, ready to meet people. Don't be shy. This is our place to put like a face with a name on Instagram or Facebook uh, where we can just meet each other. But also you can make plans if you are traveling alone to BravoCon make plans to hang out with other people. Like this is our way. There's lots of events at the BravoCon Facebook group we're having that night. Uh, so I did mine at five o'clock. That way we just have a little bit of time to uh, meet people and for an hour and then head out to all the other events that are going on or whatever you had going on, right? Um, so again, it's five to 6 p.m. Somebody said, you can get all the information. I'll be posting about it every day. And also on Thursday this week, I'm gonna go live with Dana Wilkie and we're going to chat all the latest in the past Jeff Lewis feuds, which kind of came up today because he saw Jenny Poulos yesterday. So we're definitely going to chat about that. There is a, a link everywhere. I'm promoting it. It is on her uh, YouTube channel, though. I'm forgetting the exact name of it. I know it's Donna Wilkie, Wilkie W-I-L-K-E-Y, but I think it's got an other name. But anyways, I've got the links everywhere. So make plans to join us live on that this Thursday at one o'clock Eastern. Okay. Real quick, my obsession. I can't believe I don't have 90 Day Fiance obsessed, right? 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, episode 11 last night. Not, or was it Sunday? I can't even keep up. Not much happened. They do go on this boat. Of course, Angela brings her iPad of her husband, Michael. I'm so kind of over that. But at this point, she and Michael, probably because he's in freaking Nigeria and she's on this resort, seem to be getting along the best right now, right? kind of crazy. Kalani calls an emergency counseling session instead of going on this boat so she can tell her husband Kalani, uh, Asuelo that her lover, her this Dallas guy flew in and they were just going to go and talk, but they end up staying the night and I guess doing the deed probably. And, you know, he just seems like a much better fit for her. She definitely says they just fight all the time. Asuelo has basically cheated on her from the second they were together until now. So all, like multiple, multiple times. So, you know, for him to give it another shot, I think she's kind of over it and I'm here for it. Like I assume 99% of us are team Kalani on this. You know, I hate that they have two little boys together in this and I'm not really sure what their financial situation is outside of the money they clearly make from 98 Fiance because that's, that's got to be quite a job. That's got to be quite a bank, a bank account, right? Plus, I'm assuming they can make money off like ads and stuff on Instagram and social media, right? Like, I think they're pretty popular. I need to look up and see how many people they have. Um, oh, Melanie says Kalani and Asuela were not together right now. So the last I scooped last night was she shared a little bitty picture of this guy Dallas's face in August. So I don't think she's come out with him completely yet. But, you know, maybe he's someone that doesn't want all the fame and everything. What well, I feel like my lighting is really bad. Um, I feel like I need to get really close to have better lighting. Oh, well. 
Um, anyways, uh, Yari gets so mad at Jovi, though. I'm starting to think that they are just playing it up for the show. Like, I really think, like, I watch them on TikTok all the time. Right now, they've got a family picture of the three of them being like the Adams family. It's super cute. So we know they're together and they're fine right now. Um, I just feel like she throws a drink in his face and I'm like, is that a hot coffee or a cold coffee? Cause I'm sorry if a man did that, they, that would be much worse. And I don't think it's right either because I like, again, I don't know if it was a hot coffee. It looked like a coffee or a tea. I can't tell, but I don't know if it was hot or cold, but if it was hot and she threw that on him, uh, then security should have been whipping her away from him, just like they would have done if he would have done that to her. So that's one thing I really can't stand with reality or in life when people treat men differently than women when they are doing the abuse or the something that they would really get canceled for doing. Um, Big Ed, no neck Ed, whatever his name is. Oh, oh, I can't believe my daughter walked by and she knows Ed from the other girl that he first became famous with, whatever her name was, right? Um, the Philippines, was she from the Philippines? That girl that's now like a lesbian or bisexual, whatever she is. Uh, anyways, and he's like, what? He found another girl to be with? And I'm like, I know, right? So whatever that girl's name is, I can't remember her name, but um, you know, he basically stirs up crap because he's telling all this crap that Jovi did the night before at the strip club, whenever he, in my opinion, did much worse because he was like touching the girls and being so disgusting. Um, and then Jovi and Yari end up getting to this big fight. And then Ed brings, who has a grown ass daughter, who I think he's on the outs with. By the way, I think Ed is on the outs with his daughter, his only child and his mother. So I don't know. That just says a lot about Ed, if you ask me. Um, but that he brings up uh, Jovi and Yari's little girl and basically says, don't you need to be a better dad for her? And rightfully so, they come at him and it's like, look, don't bring my kid into this, which I totally agree with. Nothing really happened at the end of the whole show. Um, all I know is TLC has uh, made love with somebody, their production company, and birthed some more shows. Yes, you heard it right. They now have a new show called 90 Day Fiance Pillow Talk. Something about living in Miami. Yes, a bunch of these people got together and they are in a house together and they're basically doing pillow talk meets, uh, you know, big brother of sorts. And they're talking about the shows. Oh my God, like how many shows and franchises can they birth? I swear, Liz, that's her name. Thank you. Liz can do much better, Whisper of Blue, but she's a hot freaking mess too. Like her drunk escapades, her running away when they fight, like all of that drives me insane for sure. And then another show that I'd forgotten about, the family Chantel. Do you remember these hot mess people? They are all about the TV and they know exactly what they're doing. That mom that's the attorney, she was just on one of the franchises trying to find love that she had met with this guy and he, they ended up not working out. Um, I think that the people are getting a divorce. I totally watched that show and it's going to be on, it's called Final Chapter. Do I believe anything about TLC as a final chapter? I don't know, but they, they, they reel me in with everything. Why do they do that? Rose. Yes, that was her name. Thank you on Tic Tac. Wait, Vina, what? No TLC for me after that disaster of Sister Wives. I mean, some call it a disaster. Some call it amazing TV, right? I think Donna Bowling would agree. Her impersonate her impersonations of Robin with the uh, with the eyebrows and her sharpies are hilarious. Um, oh, that's true. Sherry Lapina says J Liz has been hurt by so many people. You can tell there's trauma. What I don't like though is um, even like on the other. One, I haven't chatted about this one yet. The newest season eleven episode one of the the ninety day fiance. That um, Gino and Jasmine, good Lord, they've been on every freaking show. Uh, you know, she's about to leave her two kids and come over. Where have her kids been? I know there's a dad in the fam in, in the, the kids' lives, so that's good. But I'm like, good Lord, lady, I feel like you've been filming a 90 Day Fiance. They claim now she lost her job as a teacher. I'm like, because you're a freaking lunatic. Nobody wants to know you're their kid's teacher when you're acting this way on TV. And how much school were you missing recording, filming all these freaking 90 Day Fiancés? Oh, my God. 
my love affair with TLC because, you know, I do think they're like kind of the birth, although MTV probably was um, technically the birth of reality TV uh, with the, the real world and, you know, all those shows. I think even the Osbournes were on MTV, but I really consider TLC to be because the baby story, a wedding story. I mean, I watched all that crap for sure. Oh, yes, Melanie. I think Chantel and all that. I think I think they're all schemers, scammers. Like, oh, I think it's so gross. Um, anyways, MTV World World was the first. I mean, I just remember being fascinated by that show. Like, what? These strangers are going to go and live together. I was just crazy. Do you like the little, I don't think we can call it that, can we? Uh, the Atlanta shows. Is that show still on? There's there's so many shows of little people. Um, I don't know if those girls, if that show is still on, though, were like some were married, some were fighting. I don't remember if that's even on or not. I know Jeff Lewis loves all those people, loves the little people. Oh, my God. Speaking of Jeff Lewis, let's get into today's show. Judge Lauren Lake was on with Justin Martindale. They get into this. So yesterday, Jeff admits he's now on a Taco Bell run. I'm so here for it. His order is three hard taco Supremes, but take off the sour cream. I'm sort of here for it. He totally makes me want Taco Bell now. But knowing that they're walking in, which I fully agree with. Don't you agree? You need to eat Taco Bell. This is why I'm always surprised that anyone door dashes Taco Bell. There's certain fast foods you need to eat within two minutes of it being finished, right? Taco Bell is definitely one of those things. So I agree with Jeff and Shane walking into the Taco Bell. They walk in front and he locks eyes with none other than Jenny Pulos. Oh my God, I would have died if cameras would have been up with him. Oh my gosh, this is what we need. Instead, neither one of them say anything to each other. And he thinks she tries to leave the place, tries to get out of the line. Y'all, am I the only one that holds out hope for a reunion of Jeff and Jenny? Like, I love their laughter. I love all the great times. Them making fun of people. Her getting out of the car during on flipping out and like going and taking pictures next to people that were sleeping on the side of the road. People that were sleeping at the airports and then taking their pictures. Oh, my God. I know. I know there's no hope. I'm just saying I do hold out hope for them for sure. Oh, Sunny says it's never happening. Y'all are so cruel. Y'all can break it to me a little nicer, you know. I do love that um, on the after show, Pez is such a fan of flipping out. And he was even like, oh, my God, like I just remember them, them having so much fun together. I was such a big fan of the show. Yeah, I think it's sad. I want them. Do I think? I think he is okay with it. There's even a story out there. Was that Soho House? They were at some fancy restaurant and he saw her and he sent over some like drinks and appetizers as sort of like a, an apology and she, she refused them. So I don't think there's any hope, but I think if she and her husband were going through a divorce, I think she would be right there with the whole real reality thing. But you know, she's a, a rich stay-at-home mom, I'm assuming, to her two little girls, very full-time job. So I'm assuming there's no hope there at all. But, you know, I could I could hold out hope, just like Pej, like Pej was saying. Yes, Jeff has tried to reach out. It's Jenny who closed the door. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, Melanie. Jeff and Jenny are my favorite. They got to make up. At the Watch What Happens Live that I was at, the audience with Bethany and Jeff, uh, they did play a game like agree or disagree. And they asked if they thought there was any hope or something like that for Jenny and Jeff to, to reunite. And I think Jeff said agree. But clearly, you know, it takes two people to to burn a bridge. Well, no, it doesn't. Jeff can burn a bridge by himself, which he put. He played the Jeff Lewis investigates the Heather McDonald earrings thing today. I'm sure he did that because Justin Martindale was on and the whole feud with her started between Justin and Heather. Then it kind of bled over to Krista and the, the earrings. And then Jeff didn't like that she was lying about something. So, but it's no accident that he played that. You can even see on the Jeff Lewis videos, you'll see him and Jason Jameson talking about which, uh, 
which one they want to air. And I'm sure we'll see it where he says, you know, play the Heather McDonald one. Yes, Lady Grace says it's sad because I think Jenny would be so good on 789. You know, he gives her credit. She always wanted this them to be a radio show. So he gives her credit. And also, you know, she had like auditioned or something for her to be doing this reality TV show. When they saw Jeff and the chaos that was them, they flipped the script and made the whole dang show about him. He's the one that ended up becoming famous, right? How could you see Jeff Lewis and not know he's reality TV gold? I mean, abs of freaking lootly, right? But I'm sure she always held out a little bit of resentment, you know? She became famous too. She made lots of money off of flipping out and the other show, uh, Interior Therapy. Uh, and then they, they run the radio together. And then that all went downhill, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, she, she is the rapper on the Watch What Happens Live intro show. She's the rapper on Juicy Scoop podcast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I heard you on the after show, Zuba. Uh, you and your don't have an accent. Uh, yeah, Zuba says it's sad their friendship ended. I just remember them laughing so much together. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, what else? Okay, so somebody else, shout out if it's you, won two tickets to the Hollow Teeny party. We now know it's at five o'clock California time. So it's kind of an evening thing for anyone that was trying to plan. God forbid Jeff or Channel 789 realized that Chumps would try to win this and they would fly in somewhere. But when you don't give enough notice, you don't give a time, like we don't know when to fly in. We don't know when to fly out, you know, and you don't give exact. I mean, it sounded like even when I was watching the video yesterday, you can see uh, more of like Jameson and Jeff, like really going over the details more about like the contest, what number they were going to pick, uh, the how to win on the app, how many people were going to win. So I guess it's now 12 people are going to win on the radio. So probably calling in every day that Friday and then probably every day, two people. So it's probably going to be local California people, right? Because you got to give, no one else is going to have enough time unless somebody's a fan that just has a, a PJ, a private jet, right? Can you imagine? Uh, Oh, Cynthia, I love that. Are we not going to talk about how amazing Justin and George Lauren Lake were today? Well, I mean, I've gotten some DMs and some people didn't think it was amazing. Um, they felt like Judge Lauren Lake talked a lot. Uh, I don't think she talked a lot necessarily, but I didn't really hear enough from, from Justin. I wanted to hear a little more. But anyways, yeah, even if you live close, it's hard to swing five o'clock. Yeah, I mean... They just got to give more notice. They got to give the details. I think he doesn't give enough credit to us chumps that would actually fly in, right? Oh, Cynthia said they love the chemistry. I think Judge Lauren Lake is one that can get along with anyone. I think she can have a conversation with anyone. So I think she's really good. Justin adds like he just, he plucks in enough comedy stuff. I love whenever he was talking about the flipping from like, talking about Taco Bell all of a sudden to like talking about horse jizz, which I was like, that was disgusting. Like, and Shane was like, who was the first person that thought, hmm, maybe this would help a dog in their hips? Like, how does that even happen? I don't even know. It was kind of gross. Okay. So, uh, he's, so Jeff even tells that caller that one though, bring some cash for the bar. So now it sounds like they're not going to provide alcohol, which I'm sure is a, a legal issue, right? Uh, didn't even sound like they were going to provide cookies. And now they talked about going to the bar before or after. Now it's going to be after. And then Jeff is basically saying, bring your own cash. I doubt he can even buy their alcohol because if they go and get drunk and get into a wreck or do something dumb, they could come back and sue him. So I know it's all for his own protection, but just sounds like there's a lot of things that Jeff has good ideas about but they're not actually able to do it. No, Jesse, um, Jeff even asked that on the video that I saw yesterday was, um, uh, can people sell, can people buy tickets? And they said, no, um, only if like somebody were to sell their ticket. They are giving everybody a plus one except for the chumps. So Alyssa on the Today's After Show gives a list of the chumps. 
and no plus one was listed for Jeff that I heard. Uh, Carney is apparently maybe sick with the, <laughs> the C word, maybe. They're not saying, but that's what it sounds like. Um, says they were talking about HIPAA restrictions and not saying what's wrong with her. As y'all know, she was scheduled to be on, I think, Tuesday and then Tuesday today with Pej, which they replaced now with Doug. And then tomorrow she was just listed as herself. So I'm assuming they're going to put someone else in. But tomorrow on the regular show is um, is uh, Countess Luann and Doug Buden. So that'll be really good. Uh, yeah, the Halloween party is in the Sirius XM garage. I think it's in the same place that they did this Christmas party that they did in 2019. Yeah. Um, oh, Opalva on TikTok says Jenny became a user for her wedding. That is definitely one thing that got Jeff was when she was kind of caught uh, what he thought was like trading services, like getting free things for like publicity or whatever, but doing it kind of in his name and without his permission. Yeah, I don't think he liked that at all. Um, anyways, have you just, Darla, have you discussed Kelly Dobb and the egg cracking prank yet? No, I did see her do that on her Instagram with her daughter and her daughter's friend. I do see some, stuff going on where she's basically calling a uh, Tamara judge white trash, but no, I haven't watched it. Yes. Oh, someone says, Katie says, will you be going to the Halloween party if you get a ticket? I mean, y'all at this point, you know, I don't have a ticket and it would cost a fortune to fly there, but I'm also out of town next weekend. Uh, my husband's out of town the next weekend for something with our daughter. So uh, I don't think I want us to all be out of town from each other three weekends in a row. So anyways, hopefully other people will post about it and post pictures. If anyone gets to go, maybe they'll put them in the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. That would be amazing. Tag me on it. Maybe if they um, if they hashtag Jeff Lewis, maybe I'll see it and be able to repost. Um, Jesse says, if I get tickets somewhere here can come with me. So yeah. I don't want to call in and win because I think at this point, I don't want to fly to LA. I, I don't want to, especially now knowing that the party doesn't start till five. Um, the flights weren't already that great, you know, because when you're flying in a week before, a lot of five or six days, the flight times aren't that great. Um, yeah. And it was going to be a lot of my Southwest points and I'm not into using all my points. Um, anyways, yes, the sluice, we need you. Uh, what else? Shane is on this dating reality show. Y'all, this, I don't know. I, I'm getting the vibe, especially after this weekend story that was on Monica's Instagram story. We know that Brogan was invited to this only 10 person. Uh, you know, he is Shane's roommate. I think Shane has said he wants more. I think Brogan has said he wants to just keep being friends. He doesn't want to ruin anything. Um, but there was a picture in like Shane maybe had his arm around Brogan or Brogan had his arm around him. Now, I don't know which one it was, but I'm hoping that there's something more than roommates going on there. And he's just doing this reality dating show because it was already booked. But anyway, sounds super cute. I can't wait to hear what it is. Um, and I'm sort of glad. Like, I think Shane is great for TV. I think he's so personal, so cute. And I'm kind of happy that he's been able to do something else on his own, right? Um, cause I assume Jeff has to like, give him the time off for it. Right. You can't just tell a production, Hey, I'm only able to film, you know, 7 PM to midnight because, you know, my daddy, Jeff won't let me stay out after midnight because nothing good ever happens after midnight. Right. Uh, oh, somebody thinks Brogan was a replacement at the birthday thing. Uh, could have been, could have been, who knows, right. This weekend. Heather McDonald, Megan, and Kelly Dodd will be at the same wedding in Vegas. Whose wedding is that? Because I did hear some talk about a wedding, and, and I think it was Kelly Dodd said, see you at the wedding. Um, but I wasn't sure who she was talking about. Once Shane gets a serious long-term relationship, he won't be available enough for Jeff. Uh-huh. I think that too. Crazy. I mean, I think there's a time. I think to be... Uh, whatever the fancy term is, because I know it's way more than, than executive assistant or whatever you want to call it. But to be someone like that to a celebrity, 
like Jeff Lewis that works so much. I do think you have to be kind of not tied down. I don't think you can have your own personal life as much. Like I can't imagine if Shane, you know, did have a serious relationship or as a husband or kids and have time for that. Right. Like, I think, I think you have to be at the time, uh, like single, single, ready to mingle. I mean, I think he's ready to mingle, but I don't know. Uh, Oh, Sonny says, okay, you're talking about Kelly and Rick. I haven't watched it yet. They spent way too much time today talking about people's comments about the egg prank. I had to turn it off halfway. Just couldn't, just wouldn't end with it. Um, I had a busy morning. So, excuse me. I wasn't able to watch it yet, but um, I usually do try to watch the Rick and Kelly show. I don't know. I didn't love the, the, I think it was an Instagram story recently that she posted. It was, I didn't love it. Don't have to love everything that everyone says, but sometimes you just, you know, choose to take a little breaky break from something. Okay. Is everyone a minister but me? Like Doug is, Doug even said on the after show, it took about six minutes and I forget, he, I think it was free to become a minister. Like when people like Lisa Vanderpump is a minister and she married now, divorced, but Tom Schwartz and Katie I thought you would have to do a little bit more. I don't know. But then hearing that Oscar, who I'm assuming is in his mid 20s, I think he said he's 26 ish, like Shane is. He said he married friends a long time ago. Well, I'm like, dude, how long could it have been? You weren't marrying anyone at Zuba is ordained also. Wait, Laura is? Okay. Seriously, everyone is an ordained minister but me. Okay, who can I marry? Oh, an officiant is not a minister. Okay, so that's different. Okay, it's a certificate. Zuba says, anyone want to get married? Exactly. Um, what else? Uh, the caller with the sister who abandoned, I guess she has a sister that was on Heather McDonald's side and the other sister was Team Jeff. And now she said she's abandoned Heather McDonald. And Jeff was like, um... You know, I'm not going to talk about that or encourage that behavior. I don't know. It was interesting for sure. Interesting. What y'all think of the, the diverse Santa conversation? I mean, of all people, Judge Lauren Lake was perfect for that. But when they thought of like, has anyone ever seen a Chinese Santa? I literally was like, you're right. Like, why can't we have a Chinese Santa Claus? You know, every other ethnicity out there. That was super weird. Um, like I said, uh, caller Justin at the end or on the after show, he's a plain nerd and he lives in Hollywood near Doug. I'm kind of like, well, Justin, are you into men? Are you into Doug Buden? Like DM him. Like I would love that for him. Doug didn't seem to really, and I don't think caller Justin was coming on to Doug. I think he just had the love of planes in common. And then was saying that he lives around, you know, West Hollywood and goes to all these coffee shops. I'm like, come on. Um, wait, what does Annette say? In their neighborhood, I'm sure they're Chinese. In their neighborhood. I think Santa's are usually at the malls, right? Um, does everyone have a horrible kid picture of them like mortified on Santa Claus's lap? It's really a weird concept, right? Like I always, if I knew my kids were going to cry, like because some years my kids were just happy and ran up to Santa. But if I knew they were already getting nervous about it, I would literally look at the people and I'd say, take the picture instantly. And I would throw them on their lap and I would let them take the picture and then rip them off really quick and like hug them. But if they were crying, I bought the picture anyways. I figured that's what it was. Like I wanted the memory of them sitting on Santa's lap. If they were mortified and terrified, that's the picture I bought, right? For sure. Um, can anyone can sign up to perform weddings? I guess people really do it like to to marry their friends or family, right? Like it makes it more special. I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, okay, we're going to wrap it up real quick. But Doug does talk about traveling. He never checks a bag. He brings a disposable toothbrush to everywhere he goes and then throws out the toothbrush. I'm so not opposed to that. This is a genius idea. But he also packs old socks and underwear and then leaves them after he uses them. I don't get this at all. Like, why would you want to keep socks with holes or underwear with holes and go on a trip? Like, I think everything about going on a trip is usually like 
having new clothes, right? Like I loved on vacation growing up and I knew that I was going to get all new clothes for a vacation, right? Wait, Lady Grace does that too? You, why? I don't understand the packing the old underwear and the socks. Like I'm lost on that. Y'all let me know in comments if you do that. I've never heard of this. I totally understand people because Andy Cohen has said this too. He never uh, checks a bag. He does everything, but that's a guy. I think guys can get away with the whole liquid rule that's been around now for a while, easier than the women with like all the products that we have. Oh, someone said my teeth are so white. Day two of whitening for the, uh, my link is on my Amazon store. Um, and this doesn't make me sensitive at all. I had them in for about two hours this morning. Uh, and my teeth don't get sensitive at all. Anyways. Uh, wow. Lady Grace, I did two weeks in Spain on a carry on last year. I never check. I'm pretty low maintenance, but I will check a bag for Las Vegas because it's five full days. I mean, I'm there Thursday through Monday and like two outfits a day. So just for the space, I need that for sure. Anyways. Well, thank you so much for joining live. It is way more fun to join live. If you're on the replay, please make a comment. Please make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Everything is under Jeff Lewis Obsessed. This will go up as a replay everywhere except for TikTok. TikTok. And uh, everything is under Jeff Lewis Obsessed. And it goes up as a podcast about 10 minutes later. And that's under Jeff Lewis Obsessed too. So anyways, shout out Chump Ads. Thank you for joining. And I'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, everywhere that we go live. And Countess Luann and Doug Buechner on. Bye. Bye, Instagram.